Hey guys, you're watching Daily Phrasal Verbs with Chris Amerikos, and this is the 366th Daily Phrasal Verb video. So if this is the first video that you're seeing, what you need to do is you need to go back to day one of week one and start there. The reason I made the Daily Phrasal Verb video series is so that you would have a phrasal verb every day of the year and you can learn all of the most important and most commonly used phrasal verbs. And the reason that I spread them out over a whole year is because when you try to learn this information all at once, it's a little bit too much. You know, it's hard to understand and it's hard to remember. But when you watch one video every day and you learn one new phrasal verb every day, it really ends up being easier to remember. Now, some years have 366 days, not 365. Those years are called leap years. And I thought I would throw in this last video as a bonus and kind of to say thanks to you guys for watching this video series. So in this video, we're going to talk about a few phrasal verbs. The first phrasal verb that we'll talk about today is to tell apart. And to tell apart means to see the difference or to be able to understand how one thing is different from another. So we might say, John has a twin brother and I can't tell them apart. Like, I don't understand who is who, or I don't understand how they're different. The next phrasal verb we'll talk about is to hunch over. And we use this a lot in the passive voice. So to be hunched over. And this talks about a certain position that someone might sit in or stand in. To hunch over means to lean over something, but to bend our shoulders so that they're pointed down. Kind of like this. So we might say, when I walked in, he was hunched over his computer. Our next phrasal verb is to dish something out. And this is not about serving food. Well, we might use it like that, or we might use it in another meaning. To dish something out basically means to deliver something to someone, but we tend to use it when someone is delivering something negative. So we might say, he can dish out jokes, but he can't take them. Like, he knows how to say jokes about other people, but he gets offended or he gets hurt when other people say jokes about him. The next phrasal verb we'll talk about in this video is to rub something in. We usually use this phrasal verb when something negative has happened to someone and they feel bad about it and we make them feel even worse. So maybe your friend John lost his job and his wife divorced him. And he comes to you and he says, I can't believe my wife divorced me. And you say, I don't know what's worse, getting divorced or losing your job. And he might look at you and sarcastically say, thanks for rubbing it in. Like, thanks for making it worse. Our next phrasal verb is to back down. And to back down means to stop attacking or to stop trying something. So maybe there's a guy or a girl who really likes you and they keep trying to ask you on a date or meet you or talk to you and you keep saying no. You might describe this person by saying he never backs down. Like he never accepts no as an answer. The next phrasal verb we'll talk about is to turn someone away. This basically describes when someone comes to us for help or they need us for something and we say, no, I'm not going to be a part of it. So we might say, orphans came to my door and asked me for food, but I turned them away. Like I told them no and I told them, go away, I can't help you. And another phrasal verb that we'll talk about is to drag on. And this basically means to continue, like, to go on, but the difference is that go on just means continue and drag on means to continue too long. Like we get bored or we don't like this thing because it's too long. So we might say the movie was good, but it dragged on, which tells us that the movie is too long. Now the last phrasal verbs that I'm going to tell you about in this video are eat up and drink up. A lot of people get confused when we use eat up and drink up because they don't really understand what up means here. It doesn't mean up like a direction. It means to start doing something or to do something more or faster. So if you have a guest at your house for dinner, for example, and you put food in front of them on the table and they're a good guest and they wait for you before they start eating, you can tell them, you don't need to wait. You can start eating right now. You can say, don't wait for me. 
eat up. And this means start eating. Or maybe you're in a bar with your friends and the bar is about to close. The bartender says, five minutes and we're closing. And you have a full drink. Your friend might tell you, drink up, the bar is closing. And this means drink more or drink faster or at least start drinking. We can use up with a lot of different phrasal verbs. So remember, the best way to learn phrasal verbs is to learn these particles. We don't need to learn every phrasal verb. If we can learn the particles, then we're going to understand some deeper meaning that we can apply to lots of different phrasal verbs. So thanks again for watching all of my phrasal verb videos and for going through the whole year learning new phrasal verbs together with me. And if you feel like you got value out of these videos, it would be a great thing to do if you could go over to one of my pages or channels and leave a review or leave a great positive comment letting me know that you got value out of these videos and you would like more things like this. I'm still making a decision whether or not I'm going to make another year of phrasal verbs or maybe I'll make a year about idioms or maybe about something else. So leave your feedback and definitely let me know what you think should happen next. If you want to get in touch with me about lessons or about me making an appearance at your conference or at your school or your business, you can send all of your offers to the email address in the description below this video. And guys, it would be really great if you could press like, press subscribe, and share this video with your friends so more people can benefit from knowing phrasal verbs. Thanks again for watching Daily Phrasal Verbs with Chris Amerikos.